This is part 4 of ASP.NET Web Services tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss different properties of the web method attribute. This is continuation to part 3, so please watch part 3 from the ASP.NET Web Services tutorial before proceeding with this video. In the previous session of this video series, we have discussed enable session property. In this video, we'll discuss description, buffer response, and cache duration properties. And in our next video, we'll discuss message name property. So what's the use of this description property? We use this property to specify a description for the web service method. If you recollect from the previous session, we implemented two methods within the calculator web service, that is add and get calculations. At the moment, none of these methods display any description. Now let's say for example, we want to associate some description with this add method. And to achieve that, all we need to do is specify the description property. So let's set description to something like this method adds two numbers. And let's now view this web service in a browser. So this should bring up the service page of the web service. And notice that the description we have specified is displayed on the service page. Now let's look at buffer response property. This is a Boolean property, meaning we can either set it to true or false. The default is true. So when this property is set to true, the response of the XML web service method is not returned to the client until either the response is completely serialized or the buffer is full. On the other hand, when we set this property to false, the response of the XML web service method is returned to the client as it is still being serialized. In general, set buffer response to false only when the XML web service method returns large amounts of data so that the client doesn't have to wait for the entire process of serialization to complete. But for smaller amounts of data, web service performance is better when buffer response is set to true. Now let's look at cache duration. Use this property if you want to cache the results of a web service method. In general, we use caching to improve the performance of an application. We discuss the basics of caching in the ASP.NET video tutorial. So if you're new to caching, please watch caching videos from the ASP.NET video series. Cache duration is an integer property and specifies the number of seconds that the response should be cached. And keep in mind, a response is cached for each unique parameter. Let's understand using caching duration with an example. Let's flip to Visual Studio. Let's view the web form in the browser. Now, at the moment, every time we click this Add button, you know, the web service method will be processed and the response will be returned from that web service method. So even if we send the same parameters, still the web service method will be executed and then the response will be sent back. Now, when we send same parameters to the web service method, there's no point in re-executing it because we know that we're going to get the same response. So it's better to cache the response of the web service method to improve the performance of the application. So if we want to cache the response of a web service method, all we need to do is use cache duration property. And this is an integer property. So if we specify cache duration as 20, then the response of this method will be cached for 20 seconds. So let's build our web service. And then update the service reference. So this process should regenerate the proxy class. Now, when we click this add button, first time when we send 10 and 20, you know, obviously the web service method will be reprocessed. And then the result of the web service method should be cached for 20 seconds. Now, if we leave the parameters as same, 10 and 20, and then click the add button once again, you know, if we are within that 20 seconds, then the web service will not be reprocessed. Instead, the response that is stored in the cache will be returned to the client. On the other hand, if the 20 seconds have elapsed, then the web method will be reprocessed, and then that response will be cached for another 20 seconds. So let's click Add. If the 20 seconds might have already been elapsed, the web method is reprocessed, and look at that. Recent calculations is incremented. 
But now we know that we are going to be within that 20 seconds. If I click that, look at that within the 20 seconds, I click the button, you know, recent calculations are not incremented. This proves that the web uh, method response is cached. Okay, so let's click this once again. 20 seconds might have elapsed. So I click it again. Now it doesn't increment those recent calculations. But if we were to change the parameters, let's change 10 to 20. So we are now adding 20 and 20. So these are different parameters. So when I click this add button, look at that. You know, these are, since these are different parameters, you know, a separate response will be cached. Okay, but then if we click again, look at that. It doesn't increment those recent calculations, proving that it's actually caching that response. All right. In our next video, we'll discuss message name property. That's it for today. Thank you for listening. Have a great day.